Hi, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're joined by Noah Green from Phoenix Contact. Hi, Noah. Could you give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Noah Green. Uh, I started with Phoenix Contact about six years ago, this coming July, as a technician apprentice. So for four years, I rotated through each of our production departments, learning the different processes that each of those departments has, as well as other aspects of the company, like our facilities department, so uh, building maintenance, and our uh, marketing group as well, so seeing how the company faces the customer. Uh, throughout those four years, learned a bunch, uh, uh, met a bunch of cool people, learned a bunch of skills that I can carry on into my future career wherever I go. Um, about a year ago, I saw an opening in our product marketing department, so I jumped on that, had an interview, and eventually landed the position as the functional uh, safety product marketing specialist. Great. So as we're talking today about uh, functional safety, um, how, how did you actually come to work with machine safety and safety process? But what is it you find most interesting about this segment of the industry? So we have a lot of automated machines in our, our facility, and of course they use Phoenix product, why not? Um, so having over the years of having to uh, perform maintenance on, on these machines and also uh, kind of learn their functionality, I learned a little bit more about the, about the safety aspect of things. Um, getting into that, it's, it's different than just regular machine controls or automation controls where you just have the standard inputs and outputs. There's a lot of thought that needs to go in to designing just a specific safety circuit. To me, that was very interesting and I, I wanted to learn more about it. And then now I'm I'm here telling other people about it and helping other uh, manufacturers get these uh, safe machines, uh, implement safety and kind of be more mindful about how they uh, how they build machines, how they operate. Yeah, I guess what we're looking at here is kind of like the uniqueness of what functional safety equipment is. So, you know, in, in terms of the broad sense, um, safety can mean many different things. But what is it that's unique about functional safety equipment? Functional safety deals with uh, advanced features such as uh, motor speed direction, um, as well as light curtains and uh, e-stops, e um, non-contact door switches, even contact door switches, magnetic ones that interlock, doesn't really matter, something in that range. Um, it, it, it monitors pretty much machine state to make sure that it stays within a given parameter. If it moves outside of this parameter, it will put the machine into a safe state so that it can be uh, diagnosed to, so they, a technician or even an operator can, can uh, look at the machine or look at the HMI that's on a machine usually of and get some information as to what went wrong um, how to alleviate it so they can get the uh, machine back up and running. Yep. But it also, in terms of like a catastrophic event, say something does spin way too fast, a, a functional safety system will be able to pick this up and tell you like, hey, machines, the motor's operating way too fast. We're yeah. going to stop it, kill the power to it. Um, so that way nothing breaks, not so the machine doesn't break. And then also potentially if a... Uh, a, a mass spinning way too fast could potentially just shatter. Now you're throwing shrapnel everywhere. So yeah. it is very much designed to keep not only the operator safe, but also the machine in a safe state. Yeah, that, that, that that's a, a really good kind of explanation there because a lot of people think of safety of, of, of something like uh, if I intended to touch something that I shouldn't, but whereas we're talking functional safety, you're, you're looking at the actual operation the parameters that are safe working in there and the, and the example you give about rotational speed being you know too great for for the, for the machine in question so great so in terms of um when we're talking about automatic operation as a defining feature of functional safety what are the the, the demands being placed or, or do you see an, an increase for more manufacturers embracing things around smart factories you know, as technology is moving in automation, we're talking about connectivity and data exchange and, and the technologies behind that. Yeah, for sure. A lot of a lot of machines now are operating on specific communication protocols, be it ProfiSafe, uh, overarching ProfiNet, Ethernet IP is another big one with uh, uh, certain manufacturers. But all of these things kind of help 
not only the parts of the machine talk to each other, but also to say a, uh, a a cloud service that someone might be using AWS or Phoenix Contact Zone, Profi Cloud. Um, you're able to trend these say events that happen with within a machine, like uh, over time, say a motor might start to draw more current or temperature might, st might start to fluctuate more given uh, over time. You can trend these things um, and predict when a certain component might fail or when a process might need to be uh, be looked at and kind of upkeep to keep it all keep it all safe. Yeah, especially even when even if you have a functional safety failure, say your machine downtime is really large this week. You have a lot of downtime in the machine that could be due to the machine's just not running because there's nothing to run on it. But it could also be hypothetically uh, a door, a guard door keeps getting opened. Well, well, why? Now that you're seeing this this guard door being opened, this is that is the reason that a machine might stop over any other reason you can look into why is it doing that is it simply someone just keeps opening the door because it keeps getting jammed or is it maybe it's too loose and it just keeps the machine vibration is wiggling it loose now you can kind yeah. of you have historical data to help determine uh future problems great so in, in terms of the if we're looking at the building blocks of functional safety what, what devices um are, are we looking at uh, as a general, functional safety has three different parts. Uh, you have your inputs, whether that's your safety mats, your door switches, uh, even uh, motor encoders that could be part of the input side of a safety system. Um, then you have your logic that's either handled by uh, relays, just straight up uh, functional safety relays, or even uh, controllers. So a typical PLC that's just meant for safety processes. And then your outputs, be it a motor's uh, contact or like a motor starter, or even like a, a solenoid valve for controlling airflow or hydraulics, however however your system is set up. Those would be the building blocks of any given functional safety system. Each of those parts needs to be safety rated in order for the entire system to be safety rated. So hypothetically, I have a uh, safety rated door, sw door switch and then a safety rated motor starter if my relay in the middle of this that's handling the logic is not safety rated the whole thing's not safety rated it would probably still function this the way that you would expect but you would not get the reliability and predictability at, that you would out of a functional safety uh logic system be it a relay or a controller okay so i just want to go back to there was something that we we kind of briefly touched upon um one was about the um operational safety but then obviously the functional safety. And one of the things you, you were talking on there was uh, you could maybe start to look at some kind of predictive um, maintenance involved in that. So when people do think about machine safety, they often think about protecting the operators from the equipment and from harm. But you were saying effective machine safety can also result in increased productivity and uptime and profitability. So what good intentions aimed at improving machine safety but can inadvertently result in limiting machines production flexibility. How can facility managers avoid these? Good intentions. So, so okay, so you're you're building a machine and you want to be able to protect operators obviously. So you throw on, you throw on a bunch of door interlocks and door switches in there. But say you're not using a safety rated relay. During the operation of this machine, uh, say as the relay contacts are switching and opening and closing, uh, and there's a weld between one of the contacts. Now, when it goes to switch, that particular contact is not moving, it's welded to the other one. Um, a standard relay, you won't typically be able to catch this. Uh, mm -hmm. they, won't, they won't tell you there's a fault, but with your functional safety relays, they do have components in there that physically bind the contacts together to make them move together. If there's a weld on one of the channels or one of the contacts, and it should be in a different state, so say a normally open should go closed, um, but it doesn't go closed, your uh, your functional safety relay will pick that up and tell you, hey, there's a problem on this channel, and it will uh, stop operation until that problem is remedied. Okay. So if I was to ask you, um, could you give me the, the top three characteristics of effective, effective functional safety solutions, what would they be? The top three characteristics would def definitely be simplicity, 
uh, how scalable a given uh, product is to a uh, to an uh, to a operation there going for a process, and then uh, uh, modularity, like having being able to customize and fit a given product to your thing to your process. Yeah. Those would be the most important ones. So yeah, th those um, three characteristics really make sense to me. So when we're talking about um, flexibility and production flexibility, you your approach to scalability and modularity will also help along those lines if you want to maybe extend and up upgrade the installation, for example. Yeah, for sure. We actually, uh, back when I was a uh, mechatronics technician, so the automation, the guy that was fixing these automated machines, we wanted to add a, uh, add a safety door like that removable door to our current existing machine. The safety system that we had inside of this that monitors the the doors and uh, all the other parts of the machine that need to be safe. Uh, it was very easy. It was very simple, uh, very modular. So adding an extra door, door switch to the situation was as easy as just shutting off the machine, terminating some wires, turning back on the machine. Well, obviously it's a program in a little bit, but uh, yeah, just turn the machine back on and now you have a new safety door. It's it was done and done maybe in an hour and a half or so. So uh, any other machine that's not any other system that's not uh, scalable in that way that you can't just simply add a new a new door to the system without having to redo the entire logic behind it. Your downtime is going to become hours or even yeah. possibly days. Yeah. And if that downtime is on a major feed into a conveyor system, for example, you're talking lots of money as well. Oh yeah, now you're now you're you're stopping like the inputs to the rest of the system. The rest of the system can't operate without the inputs. Absolutely. So in, in terms of Phoenix Contact, um, what's your unique value? So obviously Phoenix Contact have lots and lots of products, uh, but can you just tell me a little bit more about the PSR modular configurable safety systems, for example? Yeah, the uh, PSR modulars. I I love this product. So I, I when I joined on, uh, this was well, it still is actually the the big functional safety one because it's so flexible to any given application. Um, if you have just a very straightforward uh, couple inputs, maybe like two e stops, and then a uh, a door interlock or even a motor, you can get away with just one of our modules, and it's just the the base processing module. Um, if you have a much more complex system where maybe you have a remote panel a couple meters over in one direction, then your base machine in the middle that has a bunch of things on it that need to be monitored, switches, safety mats, uh, eat stops, whatever, you're able to do this and tie all these together into one safety system. Um, and even then, even then, if you want to add another remote panel, it's as easy as getting the components for it, wiring it together, and just editing the program a little bit. And then boom, now you have a whole another remote a remote panel that you can use as part of your functional safety. Um, typically, uh, I, believe, I believe all the modules are about 22 millimeters wide, so you do save a lot of space in the cabinet when you have yeah. a bunch of these modules stacked up to each other. Typically, these modules have a, a decently high IO density. So for example, on the base module alone, you have, uh, you have two of them, but we'll talk just about the basic, basic one, the PSR B1. You have eight inputs, and then two outputs. You can get and two, sorry, two redundant outputs at that. So you can get away with doing a fair bit with just one module. If you want to add more inputs, we have modules that allow you to have 16 inputs. Um, if you want more outputs, we have modules that allow you to do, uh, I think it's eight outputs per module or four, depending on which uh, model number you want to get. And even if you just want to have straight up, I'm using these to just let the operator know via a light or you're trying to feed back into a PLC, we have modules that are specifically meant as these are monitoring outputs and you can get 16 of them. So you, you can fit a bunch of IO in a very tight space, which is great for a not only uh, space saving, um, you don't need to buy as many modules, you don't need to buy so many input modules so that you can get the same number of inputs with one module that you could with three of them, you can save some costs there. Uh, you can potentially even make your wiring look super neat since all these modules connect up to each other with a uh, mm -hmm. a backplane connector. 
which is uh, again super nice instead of having to wire each module back to a control system it all just has a bus communication via the back yeah yeah i know uh, a lot of control cabinets when, when i look in them it, it can be like there's uh a collection of wires that seem to have been there from the day dot um so yeah we we uh, obviously we carry the line for the the PSR. And it's a very uh, popular line with with our customers. So uh, yeah, and in terms of what you're saying about being configurable, space safe, and in the cabinet, that's uh, benefits to to be had as well. Uh, no, I, I just just before we finish, um, I just wanted to see if you've got any final thoughts or if there are any further pieces of advice that you would want to share about functional safety. Uh, when it comes to functional safety. Um absolutely put thought into it especially when you're designing either a machine from the ground up and you want to be able to protect your operators protect your machine or if you're making a process you want to be able to protect your operators protect your process it it shouldn't be a afterthought of all right now the machine's built all right now let's add in safety this should be a, you're thinking of these at the same time like as you're building the machine you're thinking of all right what what should I put here to make it to make sure that this uh, process is safe for this machine to safe to protect the operator, protect the machine. Um, and. Try not to uh, cut costs by using a standard relay where a safety relay should be used. Yeah. Yes, you'll yes, you'll save some money. Uh, yes, you'll still get the same outcome. However, if something catastrophic were to happen. You have really no guarantee that it that your machine is going to catch that event and protect itself and the operator you have, there's no guarantee there so uh but yeah when it comes to when it comes to functional safety it should not be an afterthought it should be uh thought of at the same time as you're designing and uh and uh putting together uh a given processor machine yeah so anything retrospectively can cost a lot of time but you can also have a catastrophic incident you know if you if you're installing for safety you've got to make sure that things will s fail safe as well is a way to look at it great yep. yeah of course no it's, it's been really great talking today and i really do appreciate you taking the time to talk to design spark but um you were talking about megatronics uh, as well and i'd love to have you maybe back on design spark and just to explore you know a, around the, the history of how you got involved in megatronics and some of your thoughts maybe for engineers who are looking to to look at megatronics as a a, a, a course or a, a field of application that they would like to get into would, would you be able to do that do you think yeah, absolutely. That's uh, it sounds like a great time. Uh, I love talking to uh, anybody that'll listen about the mechatronics uh, field since it is now in high demand. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for your time today, Noah, and we'll talk again real soon. Thank you very much. Have a good one.